Hi everybody, I'm Mike McCrory and this is Would You Make It? Friends of ours have recently renovated their house and it was a pretty major renovation. They had an indoor pool that they've removed and they've transformed that into several rooms and they've asked me to make some cabinetry for that renovation. And the first thing that I'm gonna make is a mudroom cabinet. So let's get started. I'm working in pretty tight quarters today because I have all this plywood to cut up and to make matters worse I just bought a new table saw and I still have the old table saw that I have to sell. I wish I had a track saw to cut these but I don't so I'm using a straight edge and a skill saw. Now skill saws tend to to tear out the wood um, so I've taped it. It won't matter that much because this is going to be along the back of the cabinet but still I like it to be nicely cut. So here we go. I have the plywood sitting up on top of other pieces of plywood so that I can cut right through it while the piece that I'm cutting remains fully supported. I've planned my cuts to maximize the use of the plywood. So in this case, I'm able to get one back of the cabinet and one side out of one sheet of 4x8 plywood. After cutting the edges with a circular saw and a straight edge, I can't be absolutely sure that I have a perfectly straight edge. So I'm gonna clean up those edges on the table saw and then I'll flip them over and I'll clean up the factory edge as well so that I know that both sides or both edges are perfectly parallel and smooth. I'm really glad that I still have this table saw because my old table saw has a ripping capacity of almost 37 inches, whereas my new table saw can only rip up to 26 inches to the right side of the blade. So I'm gonna use this to cut the wide panels for the back. The back is gonna be 33 and three quarter inches. Um, and I could use a straight edge, but it's just not that precise. It has a little bit of a flex in it. It's, it's a straight edge that's really meant for cutting drywall, not for woodworking. So the saw that I bought was the Grizzly 1023 RLW, and I really like it. It's a three horsepower saw and it's got a lot of power, but it tends to be a little bit less practical than the rigid saw that I was used to, just because of the ripping capacity that it lacks. This is the side piece that I'm cutting now, and this cabinet is comprised of a cabinet that sits on top of a bench, and then there's a center cabinet that has drawers that goes in between those two side cabinets. And here I'm cutting the pieces for the bench. Uh, I cut the leg piece, and now I'm cutting the top and the back pieces. Now I'm marking the position of the dados that I'm going to use to hold the shelves in place. And I've made this jig so that I can be sure that the dados that I'm cutting into the sides are going to align perfectly with the dado that I will cut into the back of the cabinet. And this is a jig that's adjustable, so I'm going to make this first cut. And I'm using a board on the other side. I used my other router base to help position the board so that it was just perfectly fitting. And now this is the back of the cabinet, so I'm using the jig with the same position. And then after I cut this, I will adjust it so that I can route the dado for the second shelf. And I do that just by loosening the nuts on the bolts that I have. And then I can extend it to the line that I have for the next dado and then lock it in place again. And I have a piece of steel that I've screwed into the end piece that the router glides against and that way it minimizes any possibility of flex. And after I've tested it, now I can confidently make the cut.
Now I'm routing a rabbet along the back edge of the side pieces. I normally would have done this on the table saw, but because I have the router already set with the depth, I want the depth to be exactly the same as it is for the shelf pieces. So I managed to sell my table saw after only one day on Craigslist, so I was pretty happy with that. But before I pack it up, I thought I would use it to cut some of the wide pieces for the center drawer unit. I need to rip the pieces to 29 and a quarter inches, and my new table saw won't rip that wide. So this is a perfect use before I pack it up. The pieces that I'm cutting now are for the middle cabinet, the cabinet that holds the drawers. And that's the cabinet that goes between the two cabinets on each side with the bench. It's a good practice to sand the inside of the cabinet before glue up. It's a lot easier to sand this way so that there are no corners or edges that you have to work with. And now I'm going to glue it up. I've got a couple of helpers, my wife and my daughter, that are going to help me hold things in place. And it's simply a matter of gluing and clamping. Now for the cabinet that holds the drawers, because I haven't used the router already, I can switch over to the table saw to create the dados on the rabbits. So for the side pieces, I'm creating a rabbit at the top, the bottom, and the back side. And then the top, the bottom, and the back will fit into those rabbits. This cabinet is small enough that I can handle it on my own. It's about 24 inches deep and 42 inches high. Now I'm milling up some poplar to be 3 quarters of an inch thick and I will use this for the face frame components. Before attaching the face frame, I have to get the beadboard installed. If I put the face frame on first, I wouldn't be able to get the beadboard in to attach to the back of the cabinet. So I finally broke down and bought a track saw midway through the project. I kind of wish I'd bought it right at the start. Um, but the reason I bought this is because this beadboard has to be cut very precisely. It has to be exactly the right size to fit inside the cabinet. Now, because this is going to be painted, I probably could have caulked it to mask any issues, but I really wanted to get it right. And it fits really well. So that's the test fit, and then I'm going to remove it, and I will glue it in place.
and then I'll put some weights on top to make sure that it adheres completely. And then I'm putting beadboard also at the back of the bench. So three places that I'm using it, at the bottom of the cabinet, underneath the bench, and behind the first shelf compartment. While I'm waiting for the beadboard to glue up, I can cut the poplar into one and three quarter inch strips, and that's what I'm gonna use for the face framing. And I've created this zero clearance jig so that I can line the cut marks up with the cut on the jig, and that way I can get very precise cuts for the face frame. And I'm gonna use pocket hole joinery to attach the face frame components to themselves. Um, I'll use the pocket hole screws and glue to make sure that it's a very solid joint. Using pocket hole joinery is a pretty quick way to get the face frame all assembled. I think it's very unlikely that someone would stick their head behind the face frame and take a look, but just in case I decided to plug the exposed pocket holes so that there would be no indication of how this thing was put together. I just used a little bit of clamping pressure to hold them in place while the glue is curing, and then after the glue has dried, I can sand them flush to the face of the face frame. A really useful technique for attaching the face frame and getting it all aligned without it slipping around and, and moving while you're trying to clamp it is to use a small nail and just clip the head off and then you, when you press the face frame onto it, it will hold things in place. Because there's no bottom in this cabinet, I'm using a spacer that is precisely cut to the inner width of the cabinet. That will hold it in place to the proper dimension so that I can attach the face frame and the face frame will help to keep it from warping. And now I'll clamp it up and let it sit overnight. Now I attached the face frame so that it was overhanging just slightly and now I'm using a flush trim bit to clean up the edges. And then just a little bit of light sanding on the edges and the corners to make sure that it's nice and smooth and just nicely rounded over. I decided to spray the cabinet so that I wouldn't end up with brush strokes. And I did a little bit of research and decided to use Sherwin-Williams Chem Aqua Plus. It's a water-based system, so it's easy to put on and easy to clean up. It's very durable and it dries very, very quickly. So it's very easy to work with and it saves a lot of time when applying the finish and 
not having to wait in between coats. It's a two-part system, a primer and then the finish that goes on top. Chem Aqua Plus is really not suited for applying on top of pre-existing paint. Uh, but in this case, I'm applying it to bare wood. The only place where I had paint already was the beadboard, so I wiped it down with a deglosser, and that helped the finishing system to adhere better. After the primer had dried, I'm spraying it now with the finish, the colored finish, which is kind of a grayish green color. Now because of the size of this project with the quantity of doors and drawers, not just for this set of cabinets but for others that I'll be making, I decided to purchase the drawers and the door fronts and the drawer fronts. Um, it's just a more economical solution and the quality is pretty good. I'm using undermount drawer slides. These are the Blue Motion soft close slides and these are the quick release mechanisms and then the slide just a just clicks into that. Now inside the cabinet, the drawer slides attach to the back of the cabinet with this little clip and I've made a little piece of wood to make sure that the spacing is consistent. And because these are face frame cabinets, you also have to attach blocks on the sides of the cabinet so that it pushes it out to have a place to screw it into and I'm using the same spacer bar flipped up 90 degrees to set the distance from the front of the face frame so that it'll have the proper setback. And then I'll just screw it into those blocks. I'm using European soft close hinges, also from Bloom, and I will use my drill press with a Forstner bit. And the drill press is set to the proper depth so that the holes will be drilled exactly according to the specification. Next I need to make the seats for the two benches and also for the top of the drawer cabinet. And I'm using hickory. Uh, the homeowners wanted me to use hickory because they're having brand new hickory floors installed. So they want the tops and the bench to match the floor. And I've concocted a mixture of stains to match the color of the floor as well. And I've laid out the pieces of wood so that there's continuous grain, even though they're going to be three separate sections. I think it would just look better if I take care to do that. I'm going to glue the pieces up and I don't think there's any need to use biscuits to help align this. I'm just going to glue them up together and then use calls to apply sufficient vertical pressure to make sure that everything is lined up and flat. I just put a little bit of wax paper underneath and on top so that the calls don't stick.
So that's a lot of clamps. I'll let those three sections sit overnight and then I will clean them up on the drum sander. My goal is to have at least an inch of thickness when I'm done and that's pretty much what I ended up with. And now using my crosscut sled, I'm trimming up the edges to have the exact length of the benches. And for the top piece, the top piece is going to be overhanging at the front edge of the piece. So I'm using my table saw to get a nice straight cut. And then for the final cut, the final piece of the cut, I'm using my jigsaw. And of course I want to be very careful because if I make a mistake here, there's not a lot I can do to fix that. And I'm using a half inch roundover bit. I've got one inch of thickness, so with a half inch roundover, I'll end up with a circular front or a circular nose on the top. Now I'm applying the stain. I'm just rubbing that in using a paper towel. And then after letting that dry overnight, I'm spraying on some polyurethane. And this is polyurethane with a satin finish. To give you an idea of what it's going to look like, I've staged the pieces in the garage. Um, it's not fully assembled, but this gives you an idea of how it's going to look. And now it's time for delivery. Our friends live out in the country and they have the longest driveway I've ever driven on. I didn't record the installation, um, especially because in the mudroom it was very tight quarters, so it was very difficult to record any type of quality video. But here are some photos. It's not fully trimmed out yet, but that's basically what the cabinet looks like. And I also made a TV cabinet, similar style of construction, just a little bit different shape. Drawers on the side and drawers inside the cabinet. So I gotta ask, would you make it? <laughs>